Something I've always admired about shows like Young Justice and Teen Titans is how it handles the child superhero thing. You know what I mean. It can't exactly be good for the mental health to be saving the world at 10 years old. Obviously, they don't just spend every episode brooding about it. That wouldn't be any fun. They want to be heroes. Young Justice was formed because they wanted to be recognized as not just the sidekick. But that doesn't mean that it's not difficult at times. One episode I think handles this really well is Season 1, Episode 12 of Young Justice, Homefront. Hey everyone, I'm Ghost, your host with the most. And today, let's talk about getting trot with a spectacular standalone. As always, full episode spoiler warning. And let's get right on into it. This episode is an exploration of the two non-powered heroes in the Young Justice team, Robin and Artemis. In Young Justice canon, they lean into the first sidekick aspect of Robin to great effect. He's been a hero longer than some of the members of the actual Justice League, starting at just nine years old. He's the youngest member of the team, but he has the most experience, and it shows quite often. In comparison, Artemis has just been in the hero game for a few months. She's very competent with the bow and well-combat trained, But in a space where aliens and goddesses stop the end of the world every other month, what can one human girl do? That's what this episode seeks to find out. The episode begins with her waking up in her bedroom. She stares at an old, battered Alice in Wonderland poster on the wall and remembers her sister, who is revealed to be the assassin, Cheshire. Cheshire talks about how their mother is currently in jail, and they've been left with their dad, who's plainly implied to be abusive. Artemis asks her to stay. With... Dad? Cheshire asks, disgusted. With me, Artemis says. In the present, her mother calls her for her first day at Gotham Academy. Also attending is Dick Grayson, who snaps a photo with her. We'll laugh about this someday, he says. Back at the cave, the rest of the team is mulling about. Aqualad speaks to Red Tornado. In a prior fight, a villain implied they had a mole. He says he doesn't want to tip his hand by informing the team of his suspicions and considers contacting Batman. Meanwhile, Robin catches Artemis at the Zeta, just to watch her flounder explaining why she's in Gotham when her backstory says she should be in Star City. Artemis? <gasps> Robin! I, uh, I'm, uh, here to see my cousin. She was in the state spelling bee, here, in Gotham City. Did she W-I-N? N-O. But as Artemis follows after him, she's suddenly thrown directly into the action. The mountain's on fire, their base is effectively rubble. Robin yells at her to move for an exit. They're under attack. They flee to another room, but cannot find out who they're being attacked by or why. Robin can't seem to get a comm link to the rest of the team, and his overrides aren't working. Artemis can't reach McGann, either. The enemy continues to push. One with water power, one with fire, quickly backing them into a corner. Robin takes the lead again, yanking Artemis into a nearby tunnel. What becomes very obvious from even this early in the episode is how these two characters are set up to deal with their situations. Robin is acting. He's trying to stay one step ahead. He's downloading the base blueprints. He's running away. He's trying to find a vantage point. Artemis, on the other hand, is reacting. She's just trying to survive the situation the best she can. At this point, she's still relying on brute force to try and get them through this. As they crawl through the tunnels, Robin deactivates the base's heat and motion sensors so they can't be tracked. He pulls up the security footage to try and get answers on who they're fighting and catches some of the team's earlier conversations. They're chatting about school, and how they're balancing their loyalties between their civilian lives and here on the team. Aqualad notes that it's Artemis' first day of school today. He wonders how well she'll balance her loyalties. Just then, the enemy attacks. They take out every single camera angle. Robin can't get anything good. All that's for certain is the team is down. This makes Artemis start to panic. Robin reassures her they're probably fine. But they just took down their four super-powered friends. Her and Robin are strong, but neither of them have any powers to speak of. What are they supposed to do? This only gets worse. They get attacked again and can't do anything but try and keep them at bay. They just barely manage to escape the room through a hidden passage in the bookshelf. And they finally catch a glimpse of who they're fighting. Robots, built almost exactly like their mentor, Red Tornado. Artemis even has a moment of relief, thinking help has arrived, before realizing it is not him. Red Tornado is a Justice League powerhouse. What chance do they have to take down two of him? The red bots send a message over the intercom, demanding they surrender within the next ten minutes, or their teammates will die. Finally, answers on where the rest of the team is. Superboy and Kid Flash are stuck in the water, caged by twisted metal. Worse, Aqualad and Miss Martian have been locked in a cage of fire. 
DC Martians are very weak to flames, so it's looking bad for her. Never mind Aqualad, who's drying out. The water is rising, and the flames are getting lower. They don't have much time. Back in the tunnel with Robin and Artemis, one of the robots floods it, and Robin manages to get them out using some gadgets in his rebreather, which he loses in the scuffle, worsening the situation with the water robot. They're getting low on arrows and ammo, resources dwindling by the second. This makes Artemis hit her boiling point, seeing how Robin is barely reacting to this whole situation. She asks him what on earth they're supposed to do. Robin says, that's easy. Save their friends. Artemis yells at him. How on earth are they supposed to do that? He says she seems distraught. This does not help. She says, of course she is. McGann is dying, neither of them have any powers, and all she has left is a single arrow. Robin tells her to get trot or get dead. She asks him how he's so calm. Robin says practice. He's been in these situations since he was nine. This scene is my favorite part of the episode. It does an amazing job at showing the audience these characters and their mindsets, and how being a hero affects them as people. Artemis is just an overwhelmed teenager, facing seemingly impossible odds. Like almost anyone in that situation, she's panicking. Robin has had that trained out of him, which is, honestly, a little sad, no matter how useful it is in this situation. Robin is so used to these sorts of emergencies that he's relying on his instincts. Gather as much information as he can. Stay hidden. Hinder the enemy in any way possible. Look for any advantage you can. Use your equipment to its fullest extent. And most importantly, stay calm. Robin's position has always been that of the good cop to Batman's bad cop. Batman has to be scary to be effective, but Robin is meant to keep people from falling into fear and despair. He's doing it right now, joking and acting like the crisis is in his dire as it is. But Artemis is a fellow hero, not a civilian, so his casual nature about it is freaking her out further by making her feel unheard. He isn't explaining what he's doing, he's just doing as he's always done. This sort of thing is why, despite him having the most experience and, arguably, skill, he isn't the team leader. Robin is used to fighting with someone who is always on the exact same page as him. Batman knows every protocol, what Robin's actions will be in almost every situation, and moves to support him accordingly. But when he works with others, his actions can seem almost random. He doesn't explain, because he's never needed to. And in situations like this, it shows but he is getting better about it. Here, now, he tries to come up with a plan. An EMP pulse could shut them down. Artemis says, unless he has one in his belt, she doesn't exactly have that in her quiver. Again, taking advantage of making as many contingency plans as humanly possible without explaining that they exist, he connects a comm to a bird orang he threw during their last fight that embedded right beside Kid Flash's head. Kid Flash knows enough about science that he can guide them to the med bay to collect the parts for an EMP. Robin tells him to make a distraction, and he gets Superboy to help him yell insults at the Reds while Robin and Artemis sneak to a power source. Unfortunately, when he manages to get it in place, the circuit's incomplete. He needs a piece of metal to get it to work. The Reds catch him, and Artemis fumbles her last arrow, leaving her completely alone. With no support, no supplies, and the timer ticking down, Artemis doesn't know what to do. If she surrenders, she dies with her friends. She considers trying to escape, and realizes it's futile. The best she can do is hide and wait. Hope the Justice League finds her before the Reds do. She ends up in the trophy room and sees her sister's mask on the shelf. She remembers her words back when she was leaving. In this family, it's every girl for herself. Artemis won't be like her sister. She's found a new family. She pulls one last arrow from the shelf. Artemis walks, defeated, into the center chamber. She feigns surrender and uses her one last shot to fire on the EMP. It aims true and wedges the metal tip of the arrow into the circuit. The EMP pulses, deactivating the robots. Everyone is going to be okay. Robin, through a few lungfuls of water, congratulates her. Way to get trot, Artemis. Red Tornado finally makes it back to check on them. He looks at the robots curiously. He did not know there were any more like him. As he goes to investigate, the EMP wears off, and the robots come back online, taking control of Red Tornado. Red Tornado knocks them out, and they wake up again with their Justice League standing over them. 
Red Tornado is gone. The episode ends. This has to be one of my favorite character-focused episodes in the show. And it's not even because of my absolute bias towards Robin. Young Justice Season 1 always does character episodes well. It's the best part of the show, in my opinion. Young Justice is more tonally serious than a lot of teenage superhero shows will usually go for, which means there's a lot of room for them to explore their personal issues. And it really lets the show examine these characters on an individual level. This episode's about them both, but really, it's shifting Artemis's arc in particular by having her finally accept that these new people in her life might be permanent. This episode helps explore and explain some of her behavior in the earlier episodes. She joined a few episodes after the team was established, and has been generally prickly and slow to trust. This episode shows her issues with abandonment, of betrayal from people who were meant to love and care for her unconditionally. She didn't get the family she deserved. You see her fall back into her old patterns under stress, snapping at Robin and considering just running away from everything. But her development comes in her choosing to fight for the life she has built, even when it puts her in danger. It is no longer every girl for herself. She knows they would fight for her, like she now fights for them. What did you guys think of this episode? Also, comment below your favorite OG Young Justice character and why. Can any of you convince me out of my horrible Robin bias? Try your best! And if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. As always, thank you, and good night.